I'm Dr. Tiffany Wong. I'm a pediatric allergist at the BC Children's Hospital. Today, we are talking about penicillin allergy delabeling. How many people have told you they're allergic to penicillin? Chances are you have heard this multiple times. Studies indicate that 10% of the population reports an allergy to penicillin. In reality, upon proper assessment, 90% of these patients are not truly allergic. Erroneous penicillin allergy labels have negative public health implications. We will be reviewing the nature of penicillin allergy, the reasons for a discrepancy between reported and true rates of penicillin allergy, and how we can tackle this problem together. So what is a penicillin allergy? True allergic reactions to penicillin fall into one of two categories, immediate reactions and delayed reactions. The pathogenesis natural history and management of these two types of allergic reactions is different. Immediate allergic reactions to penicillin are characterized by the presence of some signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis. These are mediated by preformed IgE antibodies. This requires prior exposure to an antibiotic or a member of the same class of antibiotics for a minimum of 10 days. It's extremely rare for a patient to have an immediate allergic reaction to an antibiotic on their first ever course of the medication. Symptoms of an immediate allergic reaction can include hives, angioedema, rhinitis, conjunctivitis, difficulty swallowing, voice changes, throat clearing, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, increased work of breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, hypotension, loss of consciousness, and a sense of sudden impending doom. When two or more of these symptoms are present, this is diagnostic of anaphylaxis. Delayed reactions to penicillin typically occur at least six hours after taking the medication. These reactions typically require prior exposure to the medication, and they almost never occur in the first 10 days of the first course of the medication. Most delayed reactions are benign, and they consist of an itchy macular papular rash, which lasts for a few days to a few weeks without other symptoms. In rare situations, severe symptoms can occur with a delayed allergic reaction to penicillin. Severe symptoms can include systemic fever, arthritis, organ involvement, vasculitis, purpura, target lesions, or eosinophilia. These can be seen in various rare forms of delayed drug reactions, including serum sickness, drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, erythema multiforme, Steven Johnson syndrome, and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Patients with these symptoms should be evaluated by an allergist prior to a drug challenge. Why are patients accidentally labeled with an antibiotic allergy when they don't really have one? There are three main reasons. Most commonly, the patient was administered an antibiotic for symptoms such as pharyngitis, myalgia, cough, rhinitis, fever, headache, or otitis media. These symptoms are most commonly caused by a viral infection. Viral and bacterial infections often cause a rash, especially in children, and then the antibiotic is mistakenly blamed as the cause of the rash. The second reason patients can be incorrectly labeled with an antibiotic allergy is when the patient mistakenly assumes that they are allergic to it simply because they didn't tolerate it well. They may have experienced common known side effects, including dizziness, nausea, diarrhea, or yeast infection, and mistakenly drawn the conclusion that they must be allergic. Finally, sometimes patients assume they are allergic to an antibiotic because there is a family history. It's important to note Antibiotic allergies don't run in families, and there's no reason to avoid an antibiotic based on family history. We know that uh, erroneous penicillin allergies are incredibly common, and one of the important things is to identify the issues that those cause. And there are lots of implications for erroneous penicillin allergy that are important. In particular, there has been direct evidence that having a penicillin allergy labeled as allergic, but not actually having a true allergy, does increase the use of alternative antibiotic therapy, uh, and specifically second and third line agents that we know are not as effective for um, treatment of infection or prevention of infection. A good example of this is in surgery, uh, an alternative antibiotic is given for a surgical site prophylaxis does directly result in a four to six fold increased chance of surgical site infection. And so it's important to, to delabel or to remove those erroneous penicillin allergies for those exact reasons. In addition to that uh, direct um, use of alternative antibiotic therapy, 
We also show that there is an increase in length in hospital stay, um, as well as those alternative antibiotics are often more expensive, and so that does create an increased cost to the system. And finally, one of the big things that we're talking about right now is increased antimicrobial resistance. And by choosing a second or third line agent, you might actually be increasing the rates of antimicrobial resistance and thus later on in life, both reducing the options for antibiotic therapy for that patient specifically, as well as the population as a whole. As an obstetrician and gynecologist, I work with a special population of women who are pregnant. Um, and one of the big questions that we got is whether we could offer penicillin allergy testing or delabeling services to women who had erroneous penicillin allergy in pregnancy. And there were some specific reasons that we offered this. And we did an analysis of our patient population and showed that more than 50% of women who um, labor and deliver will actually receive an antibiotic during their stay, whether that is for group B strep prophylaxis, for surgical site infection prophylaxis, access at cesarean section or the development of fever and labor. So we have actually proven that offering the same delabeling services that non-pregnant adults have um, is both uh, safe for pregnant women, um, and we do this at in a specialized clinic, but it can be done in any multidisciplinary type clinic or any really any clinic about uh, testing penicillin allergies, um, and that it actually directly impacts prescribing during labor and delivery. So not only are you getting the benefit of delabeling services as well as allergy testing in this this uh, pregnancy, but you're getting them long term. And specifically, we've shown that those patients who are tested and their allergy status is clarified and they are deemed non allergic to penicillin, that they actually have uh, changes in prescribing during their labor and delivery, resulting in increased use of first line medications um, during their hospital stay. At our sexually transmitted infection clinic, we see patients longitudinally for HIV pre exposure prophylaxis and um, episodically for STI management. We know that our patients are at elevated risk for acquiring other STIs, which are often treated with penicillins or cephalosporins. Ideally, we can delabel our patients before they require treatment, and the ability to do the delabeling in our clinic setting simplifies the process, as wait lists to see allergists tend to be quite long, and patients are already comfortable in our setting. Uh, our HIV PrEP patients see us every three months as long as they're in PrEP and have an established rapport with the providers. As a community pediatrician, I'm often confronted by patients who disclose that they have a penicillin or penicillin derivative allergy on routine history taking or admission to hospital when they're unwell. It's a common dilemma that will often force us to utilize second line antibiotics that are more expensive knowing fully well that the history of a true allergy is unconvincing. Over the last year, I've worked with Dr. Wong on a community delabeling initiative to help identify these patients and provide oral challenges with single doses of amoxicillin in my community clinic. I gained confidence in doing so by applying the recommendations from the CPS practice point beta lifetime allergy in the pediatric population and getting first-hand experience. I have found that the process is not only safe and effective in identifying these patients, but it's truly gratifying to see the relief that patients and their parents experience when they are finally freed of that label. So what can you do to help delabel penicillin allergies in your patients? The first step is to stop and take a history. Describing the timing and characterizing the symptoms suspected of adverse reaction are key to determining whether a penicillin allergy exists or not. Decision support tools are available through Canadian resources such as the Canadian Pediatric Society, Canadian Society for Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and INES. We've taken decision support tools one step further and are excited to share that we have partnered with Spectrum to create a mobile assessment tool. It will take you in real time through a penicillin allergy history and provide recommendations based on the answers provided. It can be accessed by anyone through either WebLink or the Spectrum app on any mobile device. Finally, if you're unsure, send a referral to an allergist for drug allergy assessment. Let's all work together to create better antibiotic choices for all of our patients.